Jason from MTV's The Real World Boston will be joining us today. And Phil Parker, the author of the book Kiss Yourself Hello, will also be speaking with us. And I'll be talking about the presidential election. It's all tonight on Feedback. Good evening. Good Wednesday evening. Um, sorry about the, the rerun they aired last night. I believe what they aired, Dr. Reinhardt. Um, I was not available to be here with you last night. As you can tell, I'm still uh, recovering from a little bit of a cold. I was like bedridden yesterday. But I did want to talk about some things with you today. First of all, let me tell you who's coming up on the show. Um, we're going to show you an interview I did with Jason from MTV's The Real World Boston. That's coming up. And also we'll be speaking with the uh, the author of this book, Kiss Yourself Hello, Phil Parker. That's coming up later in the show. But first of all, last week I promised I'd speak about it uh, at some point soon, and I decided that tonight would be a good time. If you open up the papers, it's what you see. The presidential election, uh, it, it continues. And this coming Saturday is the uh, South Carolina primary. And as you know, the last real big primary was the New Hampshire primary, where uh, John McCain beat George W. Bush by a sizable amount. And some people are saying that McCain could do it again in South Carolina. Some are saying George Bush are going to do it. You never know going into it because, of course, they said George W. Bush was going to win going into the New Hampshire primary. But um, there's some interesting things going on in the South Carolina primary, and that is that it's an open primary. Now, if you live here in Pennsylvania, of course, you don't know what that is because we have such a closed primary system that if you're an independent, you just are totally excluded from the primary. If you're a Democrat, you have to vote in the Democratic primary. Republican, you have to vote in the Republican primary. Um, it's an open primary down there in South Carolina. And so Senator John McCain's campaign is going after some independents and Democrats to vote for him in the primary. Now, that's looking like that's going to be a, a boost for him. And, and George W. Bush is saying, hey, you know, you shouldn't be going after them. That's, that's, you should be going after Republicans because it's the Republican primary. But that raises the question to me, shouldn't we have some bipartisan support for who our next president would be? I mean, I realize that it's the primary and you're only electing the Republican candidate, but John McCain seems to be very well liked by a lot of people. You know, I don't agree with a lot of his issues politically, uh, and a lot of people, a lot of people don't, but they respect him and I think they trust him more than they do George W. Bush. So that raises that question there of your, if you're going to have maybe people cross over just to vote for John McCain in lieu of George W. Bush because they don't want to see him there. Um, there's been a lot of talk about that, and it's, it's looking more and more on the Democratic side like Al Gore is going to become the nominee, which also raises another point for Republicans. I've heard this quite a bit. If you put Al Gore in a debate against George W. Bush, Al Gore is going to trounce Bush because, you know, Bush, Bush has not been real open to doing debates with John McCain. How receptive is he, is he going to be to doing a one-on-one -on -one debate with Al Gore? People are saying, hey, if you put McCain up, you're going to have a better chance and you're going to have more of a race because if you put Al Gore against Bush, looks like they'll be going for Al Gore. So everyone who got on this uh, George W. Bush bandwagon since the beginning of this, um, I think you may have been wrong. We, uh, John McCain was one of the, the people uh, in the there were like 10 candidates at the beginning who was at the very bottom of the list certainly worked his way up i mean we've had a lot of people drop out steve forbes having dropped out in the last week uh gary bauer um dropped out but really was he ever in it no um alan key's still in it but uh the, i mean he hasn't got one percent of, of the vote anywhere um so i think it's 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 going to be quite an interesting uh, vote when we hear about it Saturday in South Carolina because George W. Bush against John McCain. This may be foretelling of the rest of the campaign. I mean, they're saying, hey, that was a fluke in New Hampshire. We'll see if it is when we find out what's coming up this Saturday in South Carolina. What we're going to do now is we're going to take a break. And when we come back, we're going to be uh, showing my interview with Jason from MTV's The Real World Boston after this.
everybody, I'm Brandy. How would you like to give hope to millions of the world's children? UNICEF, the United Nations Children's Fund, is saving lives in over 140 countries by providing kids with medicine, clean water, nutrition, and education. With your help, UNICEF can make a huge difference in our world. For more information, call 1-800-FOR-KIDS. Thank you. Do you know who I am? Am I a P or a D? A Q, perhaps? Or a B? <laughs> I am dyslexia, and millions of kids struggle with me every time they read. Call now to help your child manage his learning disability. There's no reason to be held back. Say, no, it wasn't a better name for a movie to come out now, and I think I'm going to make the movie or write the book. It would be a great book to have, and you can uh, call uh, to get her book. Um, you can also find it online. Well, I have a feeling I'm going to be rather opinionated. People I know, so what's well, awesome about scheduling? Um, why is it Why is it that students have such a problem here with? Tune into Feedback with Mark Despotakis every Tuesday and Wednesday night, beginning at 7.30 p.m. Because we're totally out of time, no time to talk to you. We'll see you tomorrow. And we are back here on Feedback. What we're going to do is show you now an interview that I did with Jason from MTV's The Real World. Um, this happened when he visited the Clarion campus, and we have that for you now. I'm going to go take some cold medicine, so watch this. think of Clarion? What do you think of the town? What do you think of the people you just talked to mm -hmm. out there? <laughs> oh, the people were cool. You know, the college, they had a lot of questions. You know, they seemed pretty... Seem to be listening. That was, you know, it's cool. You know, some colleges you go to, people are, you know, sort of spacing off. You know, not paying any attention. Kind of rude. People are sweet here. Uh, I hadn't seen much of the town, um, except for uh, some bar. What was it called? Loomis. The Loomis. I saw the Loomis. Looks like the lobby of a Holiday Inn to me. But we, uh, I haven't seen much of the town. But it's small. You know, it's a quaint little. Pennsylvania town, you know, yeah. it's pretty picturesque, kind of what I imagined it looking like. Um, about this lecture series, uh, you know, what's, what's, the, what's the message you're trying to get across to students, uh, you know, not specifically in this one, but in all this, uh, the series? It depends, it depends on the lecture. Sometimes it's more just a question and answer where they ask me about, you know, the show, how to get on the show, uh, what was the show like, you know, and those are, those are simple. Some lectures you go to, um, it's an anti-drug message, or you know, it's a, not really so much an anti-drug message, but a discussion about drug activity, right. you know, and usage. Because um, you know, there's no way I'm going to go to a college and say, "Hey, don't do drugs," you know, because that's just not. Like, no one's going to listen to that, you know. You can only talk about the reality of the situation um, and various things, you know, volunteerism. I've done lectures on that before, um, and so it really depends on what the college really wants you to talk about. My, my ex expertise <laughs> is, uh, uh, since I counseled in rehabs and stuff like that, I go and I talk a lot about you know, drugs and uh, what they can do to you and uh, what I've dealt with with my friends and stuff like that. Uh, moving on to the show, what ever made you want to go onto this, this, this show? I mean, I, I, a lot of people, I guess, do, but it seems like kind of a very strange thing to do to have these people, cameras follow mm. you around for for several days. What made you want to do it? I was bored. <laughs> I was just bored. I mean, there's no other answer to that. I was just tired of the situation I was in, and uh, I couldn't see any other way out, and I was given the chance to go on national television, you know, and be famous for a little while. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, that's really kind of all I saw at the beginning, you know, when you see the impending fame and, uh, and the short, it's very short-lived, you know, and it's pretty fleeting. But it's still a kick, you know, it's still kind of fun. Um, and it's, it was a change, and I got to go live in a house for free, you know, and kind of see what the entertainment industry is like, you know, and test out the waters. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I was, you know, working at a movie theater, you know. I was doing a crappy job, bored, and I wanted to change my situation. So I just took the chance. It was offered me. Having cameras follow you around all day, I think that would be just very strange. You know, I heard that, I guess it's somewhere in Switzerland, like there's a model living in a glass house now and the whole country's like standing there watching her every move. I think that's kind of like what 
this show is what is it like to have these cameras follow you around all day? It's really an odd concept. There's a woman living in a glass house. Yes, and I, I and you, you see her get up and she goes to the bathroom and you see all of this. And because they, they're, I think they were testing it, they're calling it art. It's interesting. Um, I'd say the real world's pretty similar to that, with the exception of it's not, there's a delay. Right. You know, there's not the immediate gratification of seeing us right then and there. But there's the, uh, there's the edited version of that live, same live thing, you know? Right. Right. What do you think about it when you see it? Are you happy with how you've been portrayed sometimes? Sometimes you, I'm happy oh, with it. What's up with that? Sometimes I'm happy with it, other times I'm not, you know? It's, it's, it really depends on... The only thing that I could say I was genuinely dis dishappy with, unhappy with, would be the fact that they really, they, t they tend to typecast the mm -hmm. cast members. Uh, you know, you become one thing and that's that's kind of what they concentrate you know on your personality and having written for the show it's really hard not to do that because you need to create characters for the audience to associate with and you're dealing with the average age of the watcher um the the demographic is 13 to 33 you know but really a lot of our viewers are young you know and their attention span in 1999 97 98 99 2000 it's just getting shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter. So there's lots of quick cuts. So you need to create a, characters that are defined, which is limiting, but that's, that's the nature of the show. That's what the show is. Uh, it's, not, it's, not, you know, it's not behind the music. You know? it's, not, it's, not, uh, it's not History Channel. It's not biography. It's MTV. Right. You know? It's, it's, uh, it's bubblegum. You know? And sometimes you get a little deep here and there when you get, you know, you get a good... Like real world, uh, road real semester at sea, you know, we're going to Africa, you know, and doing something deep like that, like going to where Mandela was held in prison. You get to show the audience something worthwhile and right. worth writing for, which I enjoy. But in the majority of the time, we're just showing people screaming at one another, you know, and people love that. They eat it up. Mm -hmm. You know, people in bikinis, guys with their shirts off, you know, it's not a deep show. It's just entertainment, you know, and it's quick cuts and, and uh, catchphrases and, and, and typecasted personalities. And that's just what it is. Listening to you talking there, I heard you say once that I should have edited myself there. How much did you find yourself maybe editing yourself because you didn't want other people that you were living with or maybe people you knew mm. outside of the whole real world thing think, you know? I think it became an unconscious process that I did all the time. Right. I think that I at first was very conscious of it and then I just wouldn't talk about certain things. That mm -hmm. in daily life I would, I would discuss openly um, but there were things that I just got to the point that I wouldn't talk. I, just, I decided not to talk about people in my sh on my show behind their backs as much as possible mm -hmm. because I didn't want to be that guy. I didn't want to be that guy who yapped about somebody but didn't have the balls to walk up to him and tell them myself. So I tried to tell everybody what I thought, you know, but that's hard to do, you know, it's a process. So, uh, yeah. So where do you go from here? I heard talk maybe doing a reunion. But uh, where do you personally go? Me personally, I've I formed my own internet company. I formed uh -huh. a company called www.one the number one for the road com, and it's an internet travel show where we do uh, we travel for a month at a time, and we, we cover. It's kind of like Charles Kuralt. I don't know if any of your viewers know who Charles Kuralt is. He did a segment on CBS um, back in the day, and uh, he'd go out and he'd go to small towns, and he would interview people, and he would just get you know small town stories. We do something similar to that, but we have themes to our show, like the last theme was haunted houses and hotels across America. And so we covered for a month, we stayed, every night we stayed in a haunted house or hotel, hmm. um, traveling from San Francisco to New Orleans, and we did it live over the internet, and you know, we got close to 750,000 hits in wow. a month, you know. That so sounds we, really we, interesting. We, we yeah. kicked some butt. And uh, I've, got a, um, I've got a role in a film starting uh, in May. Uh, I've got a role in a film called The Private Public. We begin filming, and uh, I'm like May 1st. Wow. So. All right. Seems like interesting. You have a lot of stuff to keep yourself busy then. <laughs> uh, man, I'm going to be. The next year is going to be cool, but it's going to be. It's going to be a lot of work. But I'm looking forward to it. I'd rather be working a lot, doing stuff that I like, than <laughs> selling insurance or something like that. You know. All right. Thanks for joining us. And yes, thanks, Jason from MTV's The Real World for uh, doing that interview with us. Um, you notice the video was kind of like digitized in there. That's feedback's attempt to become like MTV style. I think it didn't work, but it was a nice try. All right, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to be singing with Bill Parker, the author of the book, Hit Yourself Hello. We'll be back right after this.
getting out from the crowd is easy when you stop in at Fashion Bug, located in a Clarion Mall. Whether you're looking for junior trendy, girls, or fashion for women, they have it all with many different styles. With our newly expanded shoe and accessory department, you're surely to find that special touch to enhance that new outfit. And if you have a fashion question, our experts are here to help. That's Fashion Bug, located in the Clarion Mall, just off exit 9 of Interstate 80. Open Monday through Saturday, 10 a.m. till 9 p.m. Sunday from noon till 5. It's not just about planning. It's about living and long-term relationships that outweigh short-term gains. At Edward Jones, it's about more than investing. It's about knowing you. My every hope, my life, my world, it all begins with a Edward Jones, investing in you and your dreams. In Clarion, see Gary Martin, located on Main Street, phone 226-7896. has a rubber arm. If education is important to you, talk to your child's school about raising academic standards. Call 1-800-38-BE-SMART for a free booklet and be a big league parent. Welcome back to Feedback. Coming up here in this segment, we're going to be speaking with uh, Phil Parker, the author of the book, Kiss Yourself. Hello, Phil's joining us on the phone right now. Phil, thanks for joining us. Uh, let me start off with, uh, what is the purpose of writing the book? Well, the book was very cathartic for me. I had lost my job when I was 56, and it created some unexpected changes in my life, and I really had to take a look at my life and where I was and where I wanted to go. So could you explain to us the title of the book, Kiss Yourself Hello, From a Life of Business to the Business of Life? Well, kiss Yourself Hello means that we need to get in, our, in, get in touch with ourselves. In other words, we should hold hands with ourselves more often. Because sometimes when we look in the mirror, we don't really see the real us. We, are, we don't see what other people see when they look at us. So my book is intended to get you to take a look at yourself and be honest with yourself and be true to yourself. So what separates this book from other you know, self-help self -help books that are out there on the market? Well, there's a lot of self-help books out on the market, as you well know, and people seem to be flocking towards not only the books but the tapes and the seminars. My book is a little bit different in that basically I walk the talk. I mean, I spent 37 years in the corporate world. I spent it all over the world. I was in information technology, which seems to be the thing of the day. And at age 56, I found myself unemployed. In other words, I went from what I call CEO to CIO, as chief executive officer to career is over. That's what I thought, because I was told by society and other people that at age 56, I should be looking towards my retirement and just taking life easy. Right. All right, let's maybe define some of our terms here uh, and terms used in the book. The book defined success as moving from the corporate world to being successful with yourself and in your personal life. Um, define being successful for yourself. Different things to different people. I mean, society says that we're, our success is measured by the, the title that we have or the, the large home that we live in or the fancy car that we drive. Personal success means, to me, doing what I want to do, fulfilling my dreams rather than fulfilling, fulfilling somebody else's dreams. In other words, I worked 37 years in corporate America, and while I was paid well for that, I really was fulfilling the dream of the corporation that I worked for. Now, as an author and a professional speaker, I am fulfilling my own dreams. I am no longer a wage slave. Well, what do you say to those people who say, oh, I'm too old to, to start my life over like this? What do you say to that? Well, it's interesting because uh, if you look at the back of my book, the, the noted motivational speaker, Les Brown, wrote on there that the age barrier is only a mind barrier. And I think we, we lock ourselves into our, our comfort zone. I call it self-zone. And we have these mental handcuffs that say, I'm too old, 
I cannot do this. It's been done before. And that's a, mind, um, a mindset that we have to get rid of. In reading the book here, I've seen a lot about inward and outward recognition. Um, which of these are you advocating for our lives? Well, when you talk about recognition, uh, I, what I'm advocating in the book is really life balance. If you look at it in work, your career is only a portion of that balance. And in order to be inwardly happy, you have to reach some balance. And by that, I simply mean that you have to have balance in your financial life, your career, but also with your relationships and your recreation and your health. And if, if those issues are not in balance, then you, you lose your productivity and you lose your focus in your career. I think most people have a job, not really a career. And if you look at my book, it, it, in part in there said I had 13 uh, eight jobs in 13 years, and those were jobs. They weren't a career. Some people have been fortunate to work for the same company for 30 or 40 years and get a gold watch or get a retirement, whatever it is that they're given at the end of that period of time. But as we move into the 21st century, I see that less and less. In fact, I read a statistic that said most people have four to five jobs over their career. In looking at, at jobs, what do you say to those people saying that they need a job only to sustain, you know, for the living wage we always hear about, they need a job for substance, and they can't really move on with their life and their career goals um, because they have to have the job to support their family. What do you have to say to those people who have a tough time reaching their dreams? Well, I understand that, and, and I always say that life is simple. It's just not easy. <laughs> and I never suggest that one doesn't have a job. I mean, I was no different. I've lost several jobs over the years, and, and when I lost those jobs, I... I had to do what I had to do. I lost a job with a, with a high-tech company. I ended up selling cars for two years. There's nothing wrong with being an automobile salesman. But I was vice president of operations for a large high-tech company. But for two years, I sold cars. And during that period of time, I was able to support myself while I looked for that job or career I thought was important to me. So I, I always tell people, do what you have to do. And, you know, if you're fortunate and you've saved your money and you don't have massive credit card debt, mm -hmm. you probably have some time to do that. But right. we're such an instant gratification society that we think we can do everything tomorrow, and we need to learn to take our time. Okay. Um, just looking on some of the promotional material that I just sent with the book, I, I keep seeing this formula to uh, a better lifestyle. Can you explain that for us? Yeah, when I, when I lost my, my position, my job, my career, whatever you want to call it, I really had to take a look at what I wasn't doing. And, that form, and that's how that formula came to be, because it represents what I wasn't doing. And the formula stands for risk plus change over time. Mm -hmm. Times attitude mm -hmm. gets me to the lifestyle that I want to have. And I found out when I looked in the mirror, I wasn't very good at taking risks. And I was like everybody else. Change was messy and change was scary. And I wanted everything tomorrow. Right. And my attitude wasn't that great. So when I reversed that procedure and I said, I'm willing to take risks, I'm willing to make changes in my life, and I'm willing to do it over some time period by setting goals, and if my attitude stays current, I can get me to the lifestyle that I want. You had said something about, you know, this, the book was going to be, uh, just from reading the book, that originally your intent was that this was going to be sort of an attack on corporate America. Why didn't it end that way, and what made it change? Well, you know, this is interesting. The, real, the original title of the book was called Where's Your Gold Watch, meaning you don't get a gold watch anymore in the corporate mm -hmm. world. And while it started out as an attack on corporate America, as I wrote the book, I realized it wasn't corporate America that I was angry about. It was the fact that I, Phil Parker, did not accept responsibility for my own choices. And I think in this country, a lot of people are allergic to responsibility. And we have to begin to take responsibility for our own choices. We have to take responsibility for our own lives. We can't consistently put the blame on the government, the job, the weather, taxes, etc. So looking at maybe here a closing question, what advice would you give to those who want to change their lives? Well, that's a, that's a difficult question to answer in five minutes, <laughs> but I'll give you my best shot. And that is, it's really time to listen and it's time to learn and it's time to live your life your way because you are the CEO of your life and therefore you have to take charge of your life. All right, Phil Parker, thank you for joining us. Looks to be an interesting book. Here it is again.
uh, Phil Parker, the author of Kiss Yourself Hello, From a Life of Business to the Business of Life. We'll be back with a few closing words after this. stations are showing you their boring programming. Only one station is bringing news coverage closer to home. Now a story you'll hear first on 5. Every Tuesday and Wednesday night at 8 p.m., join the area's news leader, TV5 News. Tune in for the latest in local, regional, state, and national news. Plus, with our newspaper exchange partner, the Clarion News, teaming up to bring news coverage closer to home every Tuesday and Wednesday night at 8 p.m. You left the TV on. Shame. Wasting energy big time. I was watching a tape of my favorite movie, but then I had to go upstairs to iron your pants. You left the TV and the VCR on. Double shame. Please don't waste energy. It's a positive solution that will reduce air pollution. <laughs> Thank you. When you buy disposable and overpackaged products for your home, you're really saying, hmm, I'm fine with depleting natural resources. Pollute our air and water. Energy, wasted. People tell you, hey, go for less packaging. Check out reusables. Buy stuff in bulk. Well, you tell them, no thanks. I'd rather throw it all away. Buy smart, waste less, save more. Once again, thanks all, to all of my guests on the show today. Um, join me uh, every Wednesday morning over in 91.7 WCUC for my radio show, Talk Around, at 6 a.m. You can get up and watch it. And uh, join us next week. Uh, we're going to be having Doralee Smathers from the Clarion County Job Center on. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm going to go home and try to get rid of my cold. The news is next. We'll see you.